Hi, my name is Moshe Zeldman. I'm a teacher here at Eshet Torah in Jerusalem. One of the questions that people often ask me is, this whole Torah scroll thing, this book, you open it up in a synagogue, you see this long scroll of letters, hundreds of thousands of letters, all these stories that have been passed on, and you look historically, you realize this book, this script has been passed on for 3,300 years. It's unbelievable how old it is. But it also leads to a very obvious question. Why in the world should we assume that if people are copying it down by hand, generation after generation after generation, for thousands of years, Jews are on the run, Jews are in exile, Jews are being dispersed all over the world, why would we assume that the Torah we have today is anywhere near the same as the original? You would expect some mistakes to happen somewhere over the course of time. So there's really two ways of knowing that there's actually no mistakes in Torah. The first is that in Israel, in the last 30 or 40 years, they have done so many archaeological digs that have turned up fragments, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, in many different archaeological digs, fragments of sections of Torah scrolls that, when you compare them, are the exact same word for word, letter for letter, as Torah scrolls we have today. Unbelievable verification. There are no actual Torah scrolls, though, that are thousands of years old. We don't have those. We have the late, the oldest ones we have is around 1,000. But going back 2,000, 3,000 years, we don't have. So what we do instead is an academic process that was done at the Hebrew University of gathering all the Torah scrolls from all around the world. Torah scrolls from the Chinese Jewish community, from the German Jewish community, from South America, from all across Western and Eastern Europe, North America. Look at all the family of Torah scrolls that have been gathered, right? In Israel, you have communities that represent all of the Jewish people from all around the world. When a study was done at Hebrew University to compare all of those Torah scrolls, they found the following. That out of the 80,000 or so words of Torah, word for word, there was no difference whatsoever. They all have the exact same story. And then when they examined it on a letter, letter by letter basis, let's look at how every single word is spelled. They found a few discrepancies. They found that out of a book that's a total of 304,805 letters long, there's actually nine discrepancies. There's nine places where according to the Ashkenazi European Torah scrolls, those words are written in one way. And according to the Sephardic Torah scrolls, those same words are spelled slightly differently. The same word with a missing letter, or with an extra letter, with a yud, with an aleph, missing a hey. The same word, same pronunciation, same meaning, but that slight variation. When we look back today and we say that we have Torah scrolls that represent all of the Torahs that have been written, going all the way back to the 12 tribes from 3,300 years ago, and all we found in that time is a discrepancy of nine letters out of 304,000 letters, and it means the same thing anyway, that, to us, is conclusive proof that the Torah we have today is telling us the exact same story. The letter differences are so minor and so irrelevant, it's like Americans spelling color, C-O-L-O-R, and Canadians spelling it C-O-L-O-U-R. It's the same word, it's the same meaning, it's the same implication, and that's those few differences that we have. You open up a Torah scroll today, you walk into a synagogue and hear them chanting the Torah, you know you are hearing the exact same ideas, words, stories, letters, and details that were given to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai.